Good morning. Before we get started, do you remember the last three memory verses? Psalms 37, verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust Him and He will help you. Proverbs 28, 13. People who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. In Psalms 23, 4a. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. As you listen to today's story, Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh, think about these questions. Number one, why wouldn't Pharaoh let the Israelites leave his country? Number two, why did the Israelites accuse Moses and Aaron of bringing greater trouble on them? Number three, who comforted Moses when he was unhappy because Pharaoh would not listen to his request? Number four, what happened to Moses' rod when he threw it on the ground? And number five, what miracle did Moses and Aaron perform when they met Pharaoh on the riverbank? Moses and Aaron before Pharaoh. One day, a messenger told Pharaoh, two Israelites want to see you. And the king said, bring them in. The messenger returned with Moses and Aaron. They told Pharaoh, the Lord of the Israelites has said, let my people go, that they may worship me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh answered, who is the Lord that I should obey him? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let the Israelites leave the country to worship him. Moses and Aaron answered, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let the people go on three days' journey into the wilderness to worship him. If you refuse, there will be sickness and death. Pharaoh only frowned and replied crossly, Why are you trying to take the people away from their work? Get back to work, both of you, and let the Israelites alone. With these words, he sent Moses and Aaron out of his court. At this time, the Israelites were making bricks and building houses for the Egyptian rulers. To hold the clay together for the bricks, they used chopped straw. Now Pharaoh commanded their taskmasters, Do not give the people straw to make brick anymore. Let them find the straw, but be sure they make as many bricks as before. That will keep them so busy that they will not have time to think about going away to worship their God. Now the Israelites had more trouble than ever. Of course, they could not gather straw from the fields and still make as many bricks as before. Then the taskmasters beat them. The people told Moses and Aaron, You promised to lead us out of Egypt, and you are only making more trouble for us. How sorry Moses was. He loved his people and wanted to help them. Moses asked the Lord, why did you send me to Pharaoh? He will not let the people go, and he is making life more miserable for them. And the Lord said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have heard the cries of the Israelites, and I will free them from the Egyptians. Moses went to encourage his people, but they felt so downhearted they would not listen to him. Then God said, Speak to Pharaoh again and show him the signs I have given you. But Moses answered, If my people won't listen to me, surely Pharaoh won't listen either. Moses was ready to give up because Pharaoh would not let the people go at once. He did not understand God's plan. The Lord told Moses, You will seem like a God to Pharaoh and Aaron will be your prophet. Pharaoh will hear your words, even though he refuses to obey me. Moses took Aaron and went again to talk with Pharaoh. Now Aaron had in his hand the rod Moses had brought from the wilderness. When Aaron threw the rod to the ground, it became a snake. Pharaoh sent for his magicians. When they came, they too threw their rods before Pharaoh. Their rods also became snakes. But Aaron's rod swallowed their rods and became a harmless cane in Aaron's hand again. Even after Pharaoh saw this, 
he would not listen to Moses and Aaron or believe their sign. On the next morning, God sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh again. This time they met him on the bank of the river Nile. Because God had sent them, Moses and Aaron were not afraid. They told the king, the Lord our God has sent us to you again. Moses told Aaron to wave the rod over the river. The water became blood. Soon all the fish died and a terrible odor filled the air. Aaron stretched his rod towards all the waters and streams of Egypt and the water became blood. Pharaoh's magicians brought to him water in a stone jar and turned the water to blood. Then the king returned to his palace. The Egyptians were alarmed. Nowhere in all the land could they find a drop of water. Now let's answer the questions from earlier. Number one, why wouldn't Pharaoh let the Israelites leave his country? The Israelites build the houses and make Egypt rich. Number two, why did the Israelites accuse Moses and Aaron of bringing greater trouble on them? Pharaoh refused to supply the straw needed to make the bricks. Number three, who comforted Moses when he was unhappy because Pharaoh would not listen to his request? God comforted him. Number four, what happened to Moses' rod when he threw it on the ground? It turned into a snake, and later it swallowed up the snakes of the magician's rod. And number five, what miracle did Moses and Aaron perform when they met Pharaoh on the riverbank? All the rivers and lakes' water turned to blood. This week's memory verse is 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, A, and C. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Think about it. The Roar of the Crowd On a balmy October afternoon in 1982, Badger Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin was packed. More than 60,000 diehard University of Wisconsin fans were watching football team take on Michigan State University. It soon became obvious that MSU had the better team. What seemed odd, however, as the score became more lopsided, were the bursts of applause and shouts of joy from the Wisconsin fans. Even though their team was being pummeled on the field by the opposing team, they were smiling and high-fiving each other as if they were winning rather than losing. How could this be? It turned out that 70 miles away, the Milwaukee Brewers were beating the St. Louis Cardinals in Game 3 of the 1982 World Series. Many of the fans in the stands were listening to portable radios and responding to something other than what they saw on the field. Application How is it that Paul could write, For I take pleasure in infirmities, and reproaches, and necessities, and persecutions, and distress for Christ's sake. But when I am weak, then am I strong. 1 Corinthians 12 and 10. He always seemed to have a positive attitude when things were going badly. Did he enjoy pain? Did he enjoy losing? No, not at all. But he was tuned into another reality. He knew that even though he was experiencing bad news, he was in touch with good news about Jesus Christ. If your only reality is the world, what you see and hear all around you, you will become discouraged and begin to feel like a loser. But if you listen to the voice of God, you will be aware of a different reality. One that is cause for rejoicing. God is in control. In the midst of problems and difficulties, we know that all things work together for good to those who are tuned in to God. Romans 8.28 Our memory verse is, Therefore, I take pleasure 
and infirmities and in reproaches and distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 10, A and C. This concludes today's lesson.